How to respond to technical question in an interview. Hello, welcome to the Scrum chat room with Dr. Francis Mbunya. It's a new year. Hit the subscribe button. Returning subscriber, thank you for keeping uh, up with uh, the learning. I'm learning from you. We are both learning. Uh, the comments have been great. The like, thank you. And uh, I think we all improving, we all learning, and uh, I've had so much feedback from you, just encouraging me to push out this video every day. And I'm also creating a pool of resources. If you check on the uh, description below, uh, the quite some learning that I'm building that will be able to help you close the gap in less than no time. So not just videos, but more of organized learning. We're building a, a massive community for everyone that need help. I do also understand that not everyone, or oh, I can help everybody, right? My coaching communities can only accept a very limited amount of people. Uh, the reason being that helping someone to go through the journey of Scrum is not just about question and answer. It's a whole lot that's in, involved. And one of the stuff we want to discuss today is about the technicality. Uh, if you have been in the market and you have been taking interviews recently, you realize that uh, the process is becoming more technical beyond just what you learn as a scrum master. And a lot of people have been asking, uh, they've been asking you a question and uh, can you tell us, uh, I think one of the questions someone asked like, uh, is it, uh, uh, I kind of forgot that question. Um, but it was more about uh, develop being a developer or scrum master and working in a development environment. But then there's so many technical questions that have been have been kind of pushed to scrum master. Talk about uh, CDCI. Talk about testing. Tell us about uh, 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 UTA and also getting into more detail. Tell us about release planning and other stuff. And you do understand that release planning sometimes we don't we don't see that in an environment right and we don't see that in this the scrum teaching or in the scrum guide anywhere so in some cases most of this question kind of just throw people off and they don't know exactly what to do now uh the reason or kind of the intention for asking those questions is because uh there's certain things which you cannot learn from the scrum guide if you have not been in a real environment, you will not, for any reason, come across maybe uh, uh, release planning. This is because release planning, it's a kind of a more technical aspect in, in the agile fee, right? When we talk about release planning, it's more on how the product is planned to be released to the end user. And in most of the cases, the person that negotiates the business, it comes with how uh, a roadmap on how they plan to deliver it. And you, the Scrum Master, only come in at the end of the project and you might not even understand uh, what was the release plan in case you're working in a very big organization. If you're working in a small organization where you're the Scrum Master, you're or the agile coach and all of that, you might uh, kind of get access to all of that. But in big organization where most of the processes are automated, except you're part of um, the agile coaching team, most of those release planning are, are discussed with uh, by the product management and by tech league on how they plan to develop, uh, deploy that and other stuff. I happen to kind of get a more deeper understanding about it because I also facilitate like high level meetings uh, within my organization. So one of the stuff which uh, you can employ as a scrum master or as a practicing scrum master in order to address situational question, the first mistake I've seen a lot of people do is that they try to answer every question. Now, even myself, I don't think I can answer every question. I've had people send me question or oh, can you talk about Azure DevOps? I said, okay, I've never used Azure DevOps. Okay. I don't try to answer every question. I try to answer what I know. Scrum environment, I kind of customize. The certain events that will happen in some environment, the certain events that will not happen in other environment. Many organizations have not even fully started using Scrum. Like they just 
trying to adapt and see what works and what doesn't work. Which is the reason why in most of the cases, if you're going through interviews, uh, master what the role of a scrum master is. That's the basic you need to know. If you're being put in an interview to answer technical questions like, oh, tell me what has been in your, your role in DevOps and in coordinating deployment, that is not your role as a scrum master. You can simply say, okay, look, um, where I work, I wasn't opportune to be part of that, but I know it's happened. So maybe in your environment, I'm going to learn that. It's going to give me an opportunity to learn that. One of the problem many uh, interviewers or recruit, uh, not interviewers or hiring managers are having with um, scrum masters that are taking interviews is that uh, they want to fit themselves in any problem, every problem. You need to understand that the reason you're being interviewed is not just for you to answer questions. It's also to understand if there are certain things which uh, you can be sincere about, right? If I say, for instance, uh, tell me a time where you had an argument with your manager and how you were able to resolve it. And you go ahead and say, oh yeah, I remember I had an argument, it was over, a product coming late and other stuff. Okay, some of these questions, they just ask to test to see your collaboration or your leadership level. Now, if you're a leader, the first thing is that you need to understand that every question that comes to you, which is a technical or situational question, is not because it's not all the cases that they want you to give a direct response. Sometimes they just want you to analyze it and tell them what are some of the possible stuff that may be going on right or wrong with uh, the question. So in most of the cases, what I do is, for instance, you can say, okay, can you tell me a time where you had a conflict with your PO and how you were able to manage that? Uh, the way I'm going to respond to this question would not be, oh yeah, the conflict was with this. I would say, okay, now, if I need to explore this question, a potential conflict with the PO is going to start when we don't have a good collaboration and communication is missing. That's what kind of stack of conflict. But what I do is that I try as much as possible to keep communication with all my team members. And for that reason, I've not really bumped into such a situation where I'm arguing back to back with my PO. But in order to avoid that this would not happen, what I would do is I'll just keep maintaining the, the communication. So I did not actually have to say, oh, yes, I had an argument with my PO. So also when it comes to uh, more of technical questions, like they want to ask you, like, uh, uh, how do you uh, run test cases and how do the QA kind of uh, work with stories and other stuff. And it's something which you probably don't have the technical experience to answer. You can simply say, oh, sorry, for some reason, I've not really paid close attention to what the QA kind of does in my team. But I just know that they're able to help us validate the story. I've not been paying attention to the environment they use. Um, try as much as possible to be non-technical because sometimes when I, I get a bit technical, I become judgmental. But maybe it's something I need to work on and try to be much technical. You can escape most technical questions. But the reason you'll be able to estimate, uh, escape them is by kind of understanding what the reality is. Many people are not taking time to understand the reality. And I always do say that when you take a certification, that's not the end of learning. You can also take uh, other learning on leadership, on communication, on how to speak. You should be investing in this journey. Now, the competition is getting high, which means that you need to do more than what an average person uh, used to do one year ago to be able to get into the field, right? Getting a practical environment is going to be a good game changer for you. Okay, I do have a practicing community, but I do have limited space as well. Uh, sometimes you might, a lot of people that have been reaching out to me lately, apologize, uh, might not have been responding. Uh, but I'm, I'm going to find time to respond to anyone that gets to me. It's just this one rule I have about helping people. If I cannot dedicate 100% time 
in making sure that I help you through the process. I'm definitely not going to accept that. I'm going to help you. Yeah. So, um, what was our goal today? Our goal today was just to help you understand that, yes, the environment is getting more technical. Uh, in order for you to catch up with the technical environment, you can go to Udemy, uh, also um, building a community that we kind of bring in more practicality. I think I built a course on the uh, teaching all the Scrum events with uh, kind of illustrating how they happen in, on Jira, just to help you kind of uh, uh, push ahead more. Uh, there's also a course where I do a demonstration on how your resume can work for you. Those are some of the technical stuff that you need in order to advance. Also, you can go to Udemy. Udemy also have so many courses. You can take one week just to understand AWS or DevOps to increase your chances. Just get a bit more technical in today's market to catch up. All right. I'm going to see you in our next video. And if you need help below, you can find my contact. You'll be able to find links on where to find what you need and also on how to reach out to me and my team. Do have a great day and I'll see you in the next video.